in Buddhism, you have to see the object of your devotion as completely pure. But the problem comes that it also puts all the power in the hands of the guru and totally disempowers the student and therefore uh, it is open to corruption. If the guru is not perfect, then giving them everything is very dangerous. And this, unfortunately, is what we see, that they misuse that devotion. They misuse that power. That's a clip from a great documentary titled Buddhism, The Unspeakable Truth, Abuses in Tibetan Buddhism, which I've linked below. I'd like to thank the person who recommended it to me in the comments on my last video about the Dalai Lama tongue kissing a boy. By the way, sorry if it comes across as confusing to hear me speak while showing clips from this documentary that have subtitles that say something else. But I specifically wanted to highlight some of these moments for anyone who won't have the time to watch the full documentary. I think these are some of the most telling moments about the dangers of humanity's religious reflexes and how they cause us to follow dangerously selfish leaders. And I specifically want many of the other people who commented on my last video to watch this, particularly those who seem to be coming to the Dalai Lama's defense so rigorously. And a few of them go by the name Tenzin, which coincidentally enough is the real first name of the Dalai Lama. And the last thing I wanna do is sensationalize and misrepresent this story about the Dalai Lama for clickbait. And much less do I want to spread disinformation about Tibetan culture, considering how Tibetans have had to fight for their independence and very existence from China's communist dictatorship. However, if there's one thing I want my channel to be about is helping to solve problems in society by exposing actual disinformation, particularly glorified, time-honored falsehoods that have managed to survive because they're considered protected classes, almost like endangered species, simply thanks to being categorized as religion and culture. But not all cultural ideas are worth protecting, and definitely all religious ideas are false. And that needs to be pointed out as often as possible, no matter whose feelings get hurt. After all, many people are literally hurt, abused, and even imprisoned or executed thanks to certain cultural and religious norms. And I sincerely don't want to be disrespectful either. But when it comes to worshiping people like the Dalai Lama and treating them as if they are gods on earth, if this video comes across as disrespectful, so be it. And this is not simply a Western way of thinking. It's a necessary way of thinking if we want to minimize and let alone end needless, avoidable suffering for others. We need to get past this counterproductive social decorum regarding bad ideas that are protected as culture and religion that leads to certain people acquiring undeserved power over the rest of our lives. And there are false ideas that we can call out with certainty. Yes, there's a time and place for humility about things you don't know, but there are falsehoods that can and need to be called out before more people's lives are destroyed by them especially the religious falsehoods that are demonstrably man-made and carefully crafted to manipulate people through confusion and intimidation. And not just the religious ones, but the secular political ones as well, such as communist tyrannies, especially when they're disguised as democratic socialism. The moment I saw that video of the Dalai Lama tongue kissing that kid, I was immediately reminded about the Catholic priest molestation scandal which ironically reminded me of previous stories I remember reading years ago of Buddhist monks committing similar crimes. Not to mention Jewish rabbis, Muslim clerics, and I can only imagine the abuse by Hindu gurus. But I don't want to make this video too long considering most people's short attention spans, which is a large reason why people still resort to religion and superstition instead of reason and science. I'm sorry if I sound as if I'm coming across as condescending and judgmental. After all, I'm not a journalist and much less an anthropologist. But you don't need to be either or to do just a little bit of research and discover that the Dalai Lama has covered up a lot of abuse, and specifically by Tibetan Buddhist monasteries run by lamas that he has personally endorsed. And by digging just a little deeper into this rabbit hole, I also discovered that it's not just the Dalai Lama who's believed to be a reincarnated Buddha. Apparently, there's a whole scheme of children that are believed to be the reincarnation of other Buddhist lamas. 
And then those kids are basically separated from their families and raised by other Buddhist monks, mostly men, many who take on vows of celibacy, which is so unnatural for any full-blooded heterosexual adult male to do. Apparently, it's not just Catholic priests that subscribe to that charade where closeted homosexuals and even pedophiles manage to live amongst each other cloistered from the rest of the world. If I were a gambling man, I'd be willing to bet that in Tibet and many other Buddhist monasteries, children like these get molested by those adult males in their care. And when those children grow up, they in turn prey on other children who are supposedly the reincarnation of some other Lama that was probably molested as a kid as well, and the cycle of abuse continues. And curiously enough, sometimes those children are specifically sought out from well-connected families for political reasons such as the one discussed in this news story, which I've linked down below as well. And this is not a Western attack on Eastern philosophies and traditions. This whole grooming thing is all too familiar to the ancient Greek traditions of the time of Socrates and Aristotle, where the same thing was done by older men to younger boys and probably led to the downfall of one of the cradles of civilization. It's not surprising this has probably been going on for thousands of years all over the world in the name of religion because this is what happens thanks to lazy thinking patterns that too many people settle for when it comes to making sense of reality. And when people allow themselves to believe that someone like the Dalai Lama is the reincarnation of Buddha, it makes it very easy to take advantage of people, particularly vulnerable people in search of meaning and purpose, especially illiterate people living in poverty for generations. It's as sad as it is scary how many people fall prey to this. And how many world leaders and celebrities are all too willing to either enable it or outright exploit it? Now, supposedly the Dalai Lama has addressed some of the abuses by these other monks detailed in this documentary that I linked below. But did he really do enough to stop them altogether? If only the Dalai Lama would have come out and just admitted that for the longest time he allowed himself and millions of people to believe that he was the umpteenth reincarnation of Buddha. But that's not true at all since souls don't exist. And if only the Dalai Lama would also admit that the Tibetan Buddhist system where children are groomed by older Buddhist monks to think that they too are the reincarnation of past lamas, that that's false as well. But it's helped make them a lot of money and given them political power. Of course, the Dalai Lama is never going to come out and admit those things. And I don't doubt he actually believes he is the reincarnation of Buddha or Avalokitesvara, the Bodhisattva of compassion, if I'm pronouncing that at all correctly. And if he does believe that, sorry to have to say, but it goes to show he's not that intelligent and let alone enlightened enough to see past the indoctrination. Because if millions of atheists have managed to outgrow their religious upbringings, and some of them like myself are not that smart either, I don't see why the Dalai Lama can't get past his religiosity either. And there are many atheists who've actually been rejected by their families and entire communities because they'd rather not base their entire lives and identity on something they know isn't true. So if millions of ordinary people can do that, it goes to show that the Dalai Lama is either not that bright or he's clearly not so enlightened and selfless enough to resist the trappings of all the wealth and power that comes with living out such a lie. Which if he did admit it and would walk away from it, he would really change the world for the better. That would be quite the example to follow. Can you imagine that? If the leader of a nation and an actual faith came out and just admitted the truth about how reality actually works, not to mention all the political backroom deals and backstabbing that goes on at places like the United Nations. But instead, the Dalai Lama is claiming that he's no longer going to reincarnate himself. I guess the buck stops with him because it must be way easier to continue being adored by billions of people while spitting out empty platitudes about forgiveness and that some people need to compromise in order to have peace in the world and a bunch of other vapid, shallow nonsense that passes off as profundity but has instead legitimized actual murderous dictatorships like the Chinese Communist Party that I will never blame the Dalai Lama, or any Tibetan for taking up arms against, even if they were funded by covert CIA operations. Yet that is something I do respect about the Dalai Lama or any Tibetan freedom fighters. 
those who've literally fought for whatever freedom and independence they still have. After all, you can't forgive everybody who wants to oppress you. Because here's something I'm sure we'll never hear the Dalai Lama say. Sometimes you have to fight for peace because freedom isn't free thanks to power-hungry, sadistic psychopaths who will kill you if you don't kill them first. But he's never going to say that. The last thing he wants to do is give up his Nobel Peace Prize. And not because it's made of gold, but because thanks to that prize, he's had millions of people donating millions of dollars funding the many temples he gets to live in that are almost as luxurious as the Vatican and the throne where this other supposed holy man sits. I sincerely mean no disrespect to anyone. But if your culture and beliefs are based on blind faith and not evidence and reason that you have thought out for yourself, and you sometimes wonder why your God doesn't answer your prayers, I can only hope this video helps free your mind from the primitive reptilian mental misfiring that I would call the religious reflex, which causes too many people to grant undeserved power to other human beings as if they're gods on earth when they're actually made of the same flesh and blood as the rest of us. And if I got anything wrong in this video, please let me know in the comments below. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell for upcoming videos, and check out the links below for my original art and merchandise. And thanks for watching.